The best thing I can tell you about the cranial nerves is the face always helps you. So if you look at the face, man, is this the bomb.com. Most of you probably have had this or seen it. Raise your hand if you've never seen it. Wow, you ain't never did know what you have to do. I went to tutoring, but not, we didn't do that part. I went to the half of it, so we didn't do that for the tutoring. Ah, yeah, you only hit the half. Okay, so this is the bomb because this face is so, so easy to remember which nerve does what. Now, notice. Cranial nerve eight to earrings. And remember for that one, quote me, cranial nerve eight, which is on there, is going to also remember this control equilibrium, vertigo, and inner ear balance. So, equilibrium, vertigo, which is another word for dizziness, but not really, but you're going to want to remember that. Vertigo is the room spinning. Dizziness is you got up and you were like spinning. <laughs> so, you're not really, but that's how the difference is, I teach it. But you need to know both of those come from the inner ear. Okay, and cranial nerve 8 is an inner ear uh, and an inner nerve. Okay, um, look at five. Five is the whole face, but it's sensory. It's not motor. Seven is also the whole face, but it's motor. Number five, and those of you who kind of get a little bit into astrology like I do, you may know that Gemini is the fifth cranial nerve. And number five is trigeminal, trigeminal neuralgia. The fifth cranial nerve, trigeminal neuralgia. And you should know by now that with trigeminal neuralgia, there was intense pain. Right, guys? Okay, now, but we said seven was more motor. Seven is Bell's palsy. It means your whole one side of your face is paralyzed. Remember learning that neuro? Bell's palsy. It's a paralysis, a unilateral paralysis of the face. It just droops. My patient had that. So that's cranial nerve seven, Bell's palsy. Cranial nerve 7 is also responsible for facial tics. Facial tics or jerking tics, facial tics. Okay, now let's go to the beginning real quick. And all you're going to do is take your little hand out. I mean, take your little highlighter on the first page of that cranial nerve packet. I'm just going to take you with the highlighter. For olfactory, go ahead and write smell. I'm going to sit on this ball and then go over. I know you're tired of me moving. My feet kill me. Okay, so go ahead and write your um, smell. Okay. But, um, the optic nerve, common sense, vision. For oculomotor nerve, this is actually a motor, because you need to highlight motor in this one. This is a motor. This motor issue, ketosis. Ketosis is what? Drooping of the eye. What do old folks call it? Yep, lazy eye. 
They come in, I got a lazy eye. Oh, okay. So ocular motor, motor means movement. Your eye is not doing all that great moving. It also checks for pupil constriction and dilation. This one, the checking for the, the actual pupil constriction and dilation. So that, all of that is written in there, but I'm just giving you the highlights. Trochlear nerve is you taking your eyes and looking at the tip of your nose. Highlight that. This is move the eyes, so that's a motor. Move the eyes down. Trigeminal, which is what we just mentioned, is your face. And this is more sensory. You check it with a cotton ball. Rubbing a cotton ball on the face when the patient's eyes are closed. Abducens, cranial nerve six. This is where you do this with your finger, cardinal movements. Please remember that. Cardinal movements, up and down, side by side, diagonal. So you tell the patient, watch my finger. So you want to write, literally write that, cardinal movements. Cranial nerve seven. This is where I told you it's more motor, so if it's paralyzed, it's going to be seven. Thus, you're checking, quote me, symmetry of the smile. And you already wrote Bell's palsy. Cranial nerve eight, you already knew the part about hearing, but I also wanted you to remember balance, vertigo, dizziness. Cranial nerve nine, let me tell you these, um, quote me, nine, 10, and 12. Control the tongue movement. Nine, 10, and 12. Control the tongue movement. You are having the patient say, ah. They are always checked together, nine and 10. Nine and 10, control your gag reflex. So don't forget gag reflex. Cranial nerve 11, neck, and shoulders, neck and shoulders. This can be impacted with a thyroidectomy. It controls speaking as well. Now, let's look at the daggone thing again. Let's look at that crazy looking face. You see the face. I do want to give you some pen light cranial nerves. So when we do a pen light, we're checking cranial nerve two, three, four, and six. When we do a pen light, two, three, four, and six. Pinpoint pupils are seen with opiates like heroin. So you get an 18-year-old with pinpoint pupils, shit, you know, that's, you know what's up. Get the Narcan. Stroke patients can also have pinpoint pupils. This would be your assumption in someone 60 or 70 years old. So I think I told you guys, my nurse who is, came to visit is in ICU at the Cleveland Clinic. 
And uh, she did what I was taught, go in the room and do rounds. And when she did her rounds, she remembers what I taught you, which is a reflex hammer. You have to buy a reflex hammer, a pen light, and a litman, of course. But most people don't have a pen light, and they damn sure don't have that reflex hammer. So she goes in, she does the rounds exactly like I taught her. She checked the pupils, because she works in the uh, ICU. So she works the pupils, she did the little lung and the heart together, the bowel sounds, and then she tapped the veins and checked the pedal pulse. Well, her patient had pinpoint pupils. So she comes on and asks the preceptor, you had him yesterday, she wasn't there yesterday. You had him yesterday, right? Yes, I had him. Were his eyes like that? She goes, like what? I didn't check him. This is your ice cream in there. Unfucking believable. It had a stroke. So, CVA. Boom. Oh, they worked him up, called the doctor immediately. Uh, she didn't check him. Remember, he's on a vent. You don't know what's going on. 